This is going to be Acts chapter 5. Moving along, this looks like a little bit of a longer chapter again. Ananias and Sapphira. <clears throat> Acts chapter 5 verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, or whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And so, <clears throat> this is a pretty popular story, and a lot of people use this uh, as a proof text to show that the Holy Spirit is God, because it says that you've lied to the Holy Spirit, and then it says you've lied unto God. And... Verse 5, And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all of them that heard this. And so, immediately after he was rebuked by Peter, he died. Which is kind of crazy, but uh, I guess that's uh, what we read there. And the young men arose wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And so this was kind of a uh, punishment or, uh, you know, a circumstance of him lying uh, at that time that he died, you know. So anyway, um, And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in and Peter answered and her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which th have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Now before I talked about how fear was the fear of God, and, you know, I guess it is in this instance too, but, uh, you know, although it's interesting, I've heard that somebody has said before that Peter murdered Ananias and Sapphira, because, you know, they just... <laughs> that they just immediately died there. Uh, but I don't think that was the case. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of mysterious that they, they died suddenly. And, uh, and so that was their condemnation. That was, uh, huh. It's just a, it's a crazy story. And great fear came upon all the church, and as many as heard these things. Okay. So, you know, it's a lesson not to, uh, not to lie to God. And, um, you know, I'd like to read a lot more of what people think about the story also. But, see the husband. And, anyway... Many signs and wonders done, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, and the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them. So nobody joined the apostles, uh, but but they uh, spoke of the miracles and stuff that they did. And the believers were, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and uh, uh, 
I'm, th- I'm just thinking when I read that multitudes, both of men and women, I'm like, oh, this is gender inclusive. This is, it didn't just say men, but <laughs> in this PC world today, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. That's interesting too, is saying even the Pete, that, you know, they wanted him to just walk by them, basically, and that they would be healed. There came also a multitude of the cities around about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. And so this is a lot like the miracles of Jesus. I mean, they're doing amazing miracles where multitudes of people are wanting to be healed by them. The apostles arrested and freed. So this will be the first time we see about the apostles being arrested in the book of Acts, chapter 5. So verse 17, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. Again, this is a bad laying on of hands. Put them in the prison. They were angry that, you know, they saw them disobeying, that, you know, they weren't supposed to be preaching or doing miracles in the name of Jesus, and they were anyways. They prayed for the boldness, you know, they had the boldness, they were doing it, and now they're punished. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Oh, this is interesting. I think this might be the first time that the angel of the Lord is used in the New Testament. I could be wrong, but, you know, in the Old Testament, whenever it mentions the angel of the Lord, you know, we have what's called the Christophanies, or, you know, a lot of people think that's the manifestation of Christ in the Old Testament, whenever it spoke of the angel of the Lord, and, and it could be, you know, a term of endearment, um, is one way to look at it that, uh, you know, how Jesus is special to the Lord, so he's the angel of the Lord. It didn't mean that he was actually uh, an angel, like creature, but it's just in a term of an endearment, like, you know, like you're an angel or whatever, you know, you say to another person, they're not literally an angel, but uh, it's a high praise, right? But uh, it doesn't seem to be speaking of Jesus in this one, so in the New Testament... Um, this would be, you know, a, a creature, uh, an angel of the Lord. Um, we have a lot more detail in the Old Testament, uh, things that are comparable to Jesus. Uh, and uh, I can't think of a lot of the stuff at this time, but, you know, there's more to it in the Old Testament, uh, reasons to believe that, that there are physical manifestations of Jesus before the incarnation. Uh, anyway, this doesn't seem to be speaking of Jesus, so just an angel. But he said to them, go, go stand and speak in the temple to all the people, all the words of this life. So basically an angel freed them out of the prison and told them to go do what just had them arrested, to go do it again. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. The temple and the chief priests heard these things. They doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Hmm, right. And then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men that are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And, and then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have, be, have been stoned. So, you know, the people were so... Uh, People liked the apostles so much that they were uh, they were scared to oppose them there in front of those people because they thought you know there would be an outrage and 
they would be stoned by those people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intended to bring this man's blood upon us. Amen. They filled Jerusalem with his doctrine. That's great. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And this is also another very popular voice. Or verse, I should say verse. Um, yeah, we should obey God rather than men. And we should fear God rather than men. And, you know, God should always be first. The kingdom of heaven, you know, should be on our mind. We should th be thinking of heav heavenly things, not earthly things. And But, um, you know, they were told to, to go preach the gospel. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. He always goes to, you know, with the Jews, he always goes to, you murdered him. You know, uh, him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witness of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So, um, you know, initially when I read there, cuts of the heart, it makes me think of before or previously in Acts, I don't know, was it verse chapter 2 or whatever, it talked about the men being pricked in their hearts and, you know, they wanted to be saved. And um, so it makes you think that they had an emotional, you know, they wanted to turn. And um, But maybe in this sense it just enraged them. You know, they took it to the heart and it... Uh, deeply offended them, you know, deeply <laughs> made them angry because it says they took counsel to slay them. They didn't ask, you know, what must we do to be saved? No, they wanted to kill them at this point. So uh, they really got riled up there. So that's amazing too, I guess, the different reactions that you get from the gospel from, from telling these people. Then stood there upon one in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel, Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostle forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished in all, even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. Now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, and they did beat them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. Again, let them go. I came up uh, before, you know, they were thinking about killing him. This guy stepped up and said, you know, like, there were these other people who had some followings, and, you know, there were so many. They, uh, and he says, he, he basically, he makes the comparisons, and, and he says, you know, if these, if Peter and these apostles were preaching, you know, if they were of men, then uh, if what they were preaching is of men, then it will come to naught, like like these other guys. But if it's of God, then you can't stop it. And uh, so they decided to not kill them, but to beat them, to tell them not to speak in His name again, let them go, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So they were happy to be persecuted in the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach for Jesus, even though they were told to, again, not to. But, mm -hmm. amen. So, um, you know, it even emboldened them more. 
I guess, that, that they, they were persecuted and uh, they were able to continue to do it, and so they did. Again, this is a really good chapter. Uh, you see some persecution going on here, and it doesn't stop them. And the story with the... So, anyway, we'll continue on to chapter 6.